So on to our next fencing project so we can take these temporary Premier One fences down. Starting to dig some holes. We're going to run woven wire fence all the way around this big pasture. So it's quite a project. And we've started to dig. We're going to go 10 foot intervals through here all the way to the corner. H braces on all the corners. We've got a 48 inch tall woven wire sheep and goat fence we're going to install. And we're just going to do 10 foot wooden posts, 10 foot intervals with wooden posts all along the front part of the property where you can see it most. And our house and everything's kind of right here. So I just like, think, like the way that looks. And then along the back where you can't really see it, I think we're going to go 20 foot intervals with some metal t-posts in between to hold it up uh, just to save on the cost of all those posts because otherwise it's going to be about 200 posts to make it around this pasture so that's what we're doing we got the dingo digging some holes and then uh, i'll show you how to set some posts so we dug most of our holes all the way up and now we're just getting our line straight we've got one top line for height and then we got one line on the front here um, to make sure they're all straight. So we used the hole digger to dig all these holes, but now we're gonna go through and level some posts and actually make sure they're straight. We put one in the middle first to hold our lines as we're leveling everything up and making sure they're straight and the height's good. And then we're gonna go all the way to the front line there. All right, so now we're gonna run the fence all the way down this span, which actually has a pretty good dip in it and then up a hill. So it takes a little bit more to level it and get it right. Some of that ground on there is pretty soft too. So it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but we're gonna do a double H brace up here to uh, hold all the tension that a long span like that's gonna put on the fence when we stretch it. So we're gonna put this corner post in real tight with cement and then we're gonna go way down up on the hill over there, put that corner post in. Right now we've got some T posts in with a string just to make sure we like how the fence looks, but we're gonna go uh, post to post once we get these posts in, put a top string and a bottom string on, make sure we got a nice straight fence. All right, so the next part of our fencing project, we're coming down the hill right here, but we decided we wanted to put a big old wide gate on this little flat part we've got here. That way, if we do want to get a big tractor or, you know, a no-till or something in there, um, we need at least 20 feet to get through. So we're going to put two 20-feet gates in right here, or two 10-feet gates um, that, that catch in the middle. So, uh, two 10s equals 20. So um, we got the, uh, the Big Daddy posts that we're going to put in. I'm going to try to measure this as perfect as we can, just a little bit over 20 to give us clearance. We dug, uh, it'll actually be this hole. And that hole pretty close to 20 feet apart. I got a little bit of manual digging to do. Uh, the measurement's going to be important on this one because we don't want to make a gap that's too small the gates won't fit and too big means goats and sheep slip through so we don't want that. Um, it's a little bit harder to do myself. Um, today all the help I've got is just the security director and uh, he's not being lazy. His fencing's hard for him. As you can see he's got no thumbs whatsoever so picking things up right no thumbs i know buddy fencing's tough for him he can't dig worth a damn um and uh holding posts all that stuff is real hard to do he's good at a lot of different a lot of good things but he's just not good at fencing um, so it's just me it's amazing how many people show up when there's baby goats being born and stuff like that but as they say everybody wants to be a farmer until there's farmer stuff to do i'm gonna let them set for a few days um, and then I'll make an H brace out to this side and hang the gates on those. So I'm going to keep going um, up this hill. Um, you probably can't tell very well in the video, but that is, uh, it's a pretty decent hill going up. And so what I'm going to do is these lower posts here that I don't use concrete on. I've taken some uh, scab two by fours and I'm going to nail them on the bottom to act as anchors just like that 
um, because all of the tension on these lower posts, once I stretch the fence on it, is pulling straight up. Um, whereas there's not a lot of tension pulling up if it's on flat ground. Um, but once it comes down this incline like this and I stretch it, it's gonna wanna pull these posts up. So I'm gonna throw two of these little scab anchors on the bottom of each post of these just to help them stay in the ground. All right, so once I've tied this fence in here to this post and the H brace, now I've hooked my roll back up to the tractor and uh, hopefully it's going to back the tractor all the way around the fence, all the way down there, and uh, use this chain and pipe method. Just ran a chain right through a pipe and put the pipe right through the middle of the fence roll. And now we raise it up with your tractor. to run a fence all the way down this line I'm not going to use this fence stretcher to pull it tight so we can put our staples in the way this works is this pole right here goes onto the fence then these hooks hook onto this pole like that and when you get the fence stretcher hooked up it looks a little something like that and what I'm going to use is the winch on my Can-Am to uh, pull it tight. Hopefully it'll stretch right down the whole line nice where we can staple it up. Stands it right up for me. I'm going to pull this tight as my windshield to it. Then we'll have a nice tight looking fence all the way down. So now while I've got the fence stretched like this and that's holding it, I'm going to clip the top and the bottom and wrap it around this fence to hold it and then wrap it all the way down one by one. So we hold this tension without unhooking it, um, but get it wrapped around this post. Now when you get to the end post, start clipping those all off. We bring them down, wrap them onto themselves on the fence, just like that. That's what a good wrap looks like. I got this little $3 fence tool at uh, Tractor Supply. It works good just to wrap it around the fence. Harder to do while holding the camera, but makes a nice easy wrap that can tear your hands all up. And then uh, that's what your end H brace looks like. Go through and put four or five staples in each post. We dug with the machine when we had it rented, but uh, 
we had some weather and life delays kept us from putting the posts in after we dug the hole so they filled in a little bit if you can see and a bunch of rain got down there and they kind of uh they got a little solid so the fence posts um, aren't going in and digging that wet heavy clay out of there isn't any fun so um, what we've been doing now is um, sharpening these uh, fence posts uh, with a chainsaw and then uh, pounding them in with the sledge because what we want is four feet six inches coming out of the top because we've got four foot no 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 climb fence and we want six inches at the top um, so we can run a hot wire so rather than dig out all these holes we've been using this technique these fence posts to a point so i can pound them in easier See that sharp now, sharper. And put them in the hole. We want to line it up with our leveling string. Kind of push it down into the mud down there. And then we take our sledge. trying to get four and a half feet from the top of the hole. Which is just about perfect now. So rather than scoop all that dirt out, pound it in, it actually makes it a little bit sturdier anyway because it's harder clay under there. And then we'll just fill the hole back in, make sure we're straight with our line. Get a little bit of dirt in. Just enough to hold it up straight. And then we're going to get our level on it. Make sure the post is straight. tamp the dirt down low so we get a nice solid post so we can set the fence quicker continue filling it in leveling it and you got a post now. all right so finished product all the corners all three are cemented in we did H braces with simple strainers holding them on. We did a four foot uh, no climb sheep and goat fence all the way down. Ended up doing 1200 feet just like this. And uh, there's the herd now. Bigger spot to graze out there. And you got a post. And this is the back line. Pretty similar corners. And then uh, down a big stretch along the back side of the fence down that way. Stretched it out to about every 15 feet on these posts along the back. Still put all the fence on the inside. That way animals are pushing outside. So when I got to my gates, when I got there... They didn't have the exact gates I wanted because I needed 20 feet, so I needed two 10 feet sections. But this gap right here is kind of large, especially for um, when we have babies out here, when we have lambs and uh, goat kids. So I just took some of the extra scrap fence here and uh, put it on there. I don't love how it looks, but um, it'll sort suit the purpose. And you know, them not having the gates, but also those other gates were pretty expensive too, so saved quite a bit of money. 
what I did was just twisted this, wrapped them on the ends. Um, we're using that same little hand fence tool and uh, wired it across. So that's going to keep everybody in. Just my uh, solution for it.